Did you know that every second in our vast universe a star is born? Welcome to Astronomical Secrets, your gateway to unraveling the mysteries of the cosmos. Imagine a cosmic ballet, a dance of dust and gas, swirling together in the infinite expanse. This spectacle, this dance is happening right now all across the universe. It's a performance that has been ongoing since the dawn of time, and it is through this dance that stars are born. Our universe is a cosmic nursery, teeming with gas clouds known as nebulae. These nebulae are the cradles of star formation, the places where the dance begins. There, in the heart of the nebulae, gravity pulls and tugs, causing the gas and dust to come together, to coalesce. This is the first step in the birth of a star, but wait, how does a nebula, a cloud of dust and gas, give rise to a glowing, fiery star? How does this transformation take place? It's a process that's as fascinating as it is complex, and it's one that we're going to delve into. We'll explore how a nebula collapses under its own gravity, how this collapse leads to the formation of a dense core, and how, eventually, the intense pressure and heat within this core ignite nuclear fusion, the process that powers a star. We'll unravel the secrets of star formation from the first stirrings in a nebula to the blazing glory of a fully formed star. It's a journey that will take us deep into the heart of the cosmos. A journey that will reveal the fascinating reality of our universe's constant star formation. It's a journey that will make you see the night sky in a whole new light. So, how does a star, a celestial body that has fascinated humankind for millennia, come into existence? Stay tuned as we unveil the cosmic ballet of star formation right here on Astronomical Secrets. Stars are not merely born out of nothingness. They originate from a very specific place giant molecular clouds or GMCs. Now you might wonder, what are these GMCs? Well, picture vast cold regions in space filled with a mix of gas and dust, primarily hydrogen. These clouds are colossal extending over hundreds of light years, and within their cold, dark confines the magic of starbirth occurs. GMCs are like cosmic nurseries providing all the ingredients necessary for stars to form. But these clouds don't collapse on their own, they need a little cosmic nudge, something to disturb their equilibrium. This disturbance could come from various sources. Perhaps a nearby supernova explodes, sending a shockwave that ripples through the GMC. Or maybe a close encounter with another galaxy triggers gravitational instabilities. Even fluctuations in the magnetic field can tip the balance, leading to the collapse of the cloud. And so, with a little cosmic push, the GMC begins to contract under its own gravity. The cloud's gas and dust become denser and denser, and regions of high density begin to form. It's within these denser pockets that stars take their first breath, so to speak. The dense core of the cloud continues to collapse under its own weight, and the bright glimmers of newborn stars start to shine through the surrounding darkness. But wait, you might ask, isn't there more to the story? How do these dense pockets of gas turn into the twinkling stars we see in the night sky? And you would be absolutely correct. The birth of a star is a complex process, and there is much more to explore, but for now let's pause and appreciate the beauty of this initial stage. The cold dark GMCs, the cosmic disturbances, the initial collapse, all these elements set the stage for the spectacular cosmic show that is the birth of a star. So, a disturbance occurs and the cloud begins to collapse, but what happens next? Let's delve deeper. The collapse of a giant molecular cloud or GMC is not a uniform process, it fragments, it breaks apart, forming what we call protostars. Imagine a colossal cloud of gas and dust in the vastness of space. This cloud does not collapse uniformly. Instead, it fragments due to the inherent instabilities within it. Each of these fragments, often hundreds of times the mass of our sun, will then begin to collapse under its own gravity. This collapse creates a hot, dense region at the center of each fragment, marking the birthplace of a protostar. Gravity, the cosmic puppet master, relentlessly pulls in the surrounding gas and dust. These materials, drawn into the gravitational well of the protostar, contribute to its growth. Over time, the protostar grows in both mass and size, feeding off the abundant material within its parent cloud. But the growth of a protostar isn't just a tale of accumulation. It's a story of struggle and survival. The inward pull of gravity is constantly at odds with the outward pressure produced by the heat at the protostar's core. This tug-of-war is a balancing act, a dance that shapes the future of the protostar. As the protostar continues to grow something interesting happens, the pressure and temperature at its core rise dramatically, 
It's like the universe's most powerful pressure cooker, with ingredients and conditions that are just right for nuclear fusion. But that's a story for another time. The fragmentation and collapse of a GMC into protostars is a fundamental part of star formation. It's a process that transforms diffuse and seemingly insignificant clouds of gas and dust into dazzling celestial bodies. It's a process that in many ways, mirrors the chaotic and beautiful nature of the universe itself. Our protostar is growing but it's not a star yet. So when does a protostar officially become a star? Let's find out. The birth of a star isn't a quiet event, it's a grand ignition, a nuclear fusion. This is the moment when a star truly comes to life, where the protostar takes its final step in its evolution and turns on the cosmic lights for the first time. Our protostar, after millions of years of gravitational collapse and heating, finally reaches a critical point. The core of the protostar becomes so hot and pressurized that something extraordinary happens. The heat and pressure are so intense that the hydrogen atoms at the core start to move at incredibly high speeds. They collide with such force that they overcome their natural repulsion for each other. This is where nuclear fusion begins. Picture it like a dance. The hydrogen atoms waltz around each other in the intense heat and pressure, moving faster and faster. Then, in a brilliant flash, they collide, merging together to form a helium atom. This process is known as nuclear fusion, and it's the heart of what makes a star a star. The fusion of hydrogen into helium is a powerful event. It releases a tremendous amount of energy, more than you could possibly imagine. This energy radiates outwards from the core, counteracting the inward crush of gravity. It's a delicate balance, a cosmic tug of war, and it's what keeps the star stable. This energy also creates the light and heat that we associate with stars. When we look up at the night sky, the twinkling lights we see are the result of countless nuclear fusion reactions happening in the cores of those distant stars. However, it's crucial to remember that not all stars are the same. Each star is unique, with its own mass, temperature and color. These factors all contribute to how long the star will live and what will happen when it eventually dies. Some stars burn bright and fast, exhausting their hydrogen fuel in just a few million years. Others like our sun, live steadier lives burning for billions of years. And voila, a star is born, but remember every star is a unique celestial being with its own lifespan. Just as humans, stars have lifespans. They get born, they live, and they die. This statement might sound a bit odd, but it's a testament to the cosmic ballet that is the life of a star. Each star, whether it's the small and humble red dwarf or the massive and luminous blue giant has its own unique story to tell. Let's take a moment to appreciate the lifespan of stars. Like us, stars go through a series of stages, albeit on a far grander scale. A star's life can stretch over billions of years, with its size playing a crucial role in determining its lifespan. Simply put, the more massive a star is, the shorter its life tends to be. This is because larger stars burn through their nuclear fuel at a much faster rate than their smaller counterparts. But what happens when a star exhausts its nuclear fuel? Well that's where things get really interesting. Depending on its mass, a star can meet one of many fates. Stars like our Sun, after expanding into a red giant, will shed their outer layers and leave behind a dense core known as a white dwarf. Over billions of years, these white dwarfs will cool and darken, eventually becoming black dwarfs. If a star is slightly more massive, its death throes will result in a spectacular explosion known as a supernova. The remnants of this explosion can form a neutron star, an incredibly dense object with a mass up to twice that of the Sun, but only about 20 kilometers in diameter. For the most massive stars, their end comes with the formation of a black hole, an object so dense that not even light can escape its gravitational pull. So, the next time you gaze upon the night sky, remember the cosmic ballet that brings each twinkling light into existence. Each star, each point of light, represents a cosmic journey of birth, life, and death. So here's to the stars, the storytellers of the universe.